So a vertical guideline is basically, you can think of it as a new edge of the screen. So it's like, I have one on the left of the screen, I have one on the right of the screen, and now I've put an edge of the screen in the middle of the screen that I can use as an anchor for constraints. I'm going to kind of move that to where I'd like it in my design. And now I can just take those text views and create constraints from those to this guideline. And to kind of visualize what this is doing underneath, if I move the guideline, it's actually going to move the entire layout now. So if you go into helpers and we use add vertical barrier, this allows you to add a barrier to the screen. What a barrier is, is it's kind of like a view group. And in fact, it's actually called a group in code. So we can open up the component tree, select our email and password, and drag that down to be inside of our barrier. Now, it's not actually a view group. It's just a view that's added to the screen. It's positioned on one side or the other of all of the views that are inside of it. Right, by default, it's on the left. But if I open up the attributes pane and scroll down to the bottom, I'm going to find a barrier direction, which I can set to the end. And now that I've done that, I'm going to set up my constraints and then translate my English over to German. And everything's going to relay out and do exactly what I expected. We've added the ability to add constraints directly with the context menu. So in this case, um, you know, if you have components that are really close to each other, this makes it a lot more precise and more direct to actually set those constraints. So in this case, um, and this is available in 3.3 beta as well, uh, so you can try it out today. And so in this case, if we select one component, which we have this uh, lovely cat picture, um, you can just simply constrain it to the parent. So what does it look like if you have multiple, comp multiple components? So in this case, we have these two text views that are really close to each other. And so I'm um, not sure if people have tried to create constraints between two text views that almost overlap. It becomes a little painful when you're going from the bottom of one to the top of the other. And so with this new context menu, you can actually just keep the two selected. And then when you open up the context menu, there's now this constraint menu. And so you can actually just see that the two elements that you want to use are there, and then you can easily cascade to the right constraint that you want. The design surface has always had a bunch of view options to, to take advantage of when you're working with your layouts. So the two I'll talk about specifically are, which we added, is show all constraints and live rendering. What we've done in Android Studio 3.3 is we've added this option to show all constraints, but it's actually turned off by default. And so here's a quick video to show you what that looks like. And so what we'll do instead is we only show the constraints on the actively selected component. So this makes it easier to just you know, work with the component that you're actually working with and not be distracted by all the arrows and margins that usually come with uh, the layout. The other view option we have is live rendering. So we've actually done live rendering by default in constraint layout for quite some time. And so it's on by default, but depending on the specs of your machine, it can actually be a little slow. You've actually been able to zoom and pan in the layout editor for a while now, um, and it comes really in handy when you're dealing with constraint layouts, especially when, again, when things are really small or when they're really close to each other or overlapping. But what we've done in 3.3 is we've actually changed the keyboard shortcuts to match more of what we expect from the design tools like Photoshop and Sketch. And so to zoom in, you can use Command or Control, depending on what OS you're on, and then the equal sign. And then with the mouse wheel, you can, use, you can hold Command or Control and scroll up. And then if you have a trackpad, you can just pinch in to zoom. Then the opposite is for zoom out. So it's Command and Control minus, and then Command and Control with the mouse wheel, scroll down, and then pinch in the opposite direction. And then zoom to fit. So if you're zoomed in and you want to get back to that layout where you can see the whole thing, you can just use Command and Control plus zero. And so then, if you're zoomed in and you don't actually want to zoom out, but you want to pan around, you can actually do so by holding space and then using the mouse to kind of click and drag. Mm -hmm.